What's up everyone, Coco Mojo here, back with another Rustro Druid commentary. This is a 16 Tyrannical Sanguine Depths run I did with my tank friend, and I figured I would share. It was a pretty fun one. So you saw there, I was just following that skirmisher and waiting for him to cast the animated weapon, and trying to get my rakes done off in order to stop him from casting that animated weapon. It's going to do a lot of shadow damage to the tank, and just makes this pull a lot safer if we can stop at least one of those weapons from spawning. I'm experimenting with running Night Fae in this dungeon in particular because all the bosses have such tough HPS checks that having the extra healing cooldown has actually been really helpful. The healing buffs that Rustor Druid got make it feel really good actually. Um, and I'm admittedly a little bit rusty because I'm splitting my time between Druid and Rogue, so having that extra healing cooldown a few times per key has been really helpful. But I just remember this dungeon last season feeling really tough. Um, yeah, all the bosses just hit so hard, especially on Tyrannical, so it, uh, I'm definitely noticing the, the buffs. Oh, this was kind of unfortunate. I got into a Convoke, but just in time to see a trap spawn <laughs> and I had to stand back, and you probably saw all of those Wraths shooting out of my cat form, which uh, is not an ideal way to be convoking a cat form, <laughs> to be shooting wraths. At least it didn't start healing. That would have been even more tragic. But we're killing Ur most of the time, and there's definitely some, some benefits you get, especially when you're running Celestial Spirits. You get just a shorter, an even shorter convoke cooldown, right? And so... I, I love being in cat form and then just spending that burst on one target. And here I kind of make a mistake and not stand in my field of blossoms. I'm, I'm trying to run Dreamweaver here and I have to get used to just planting and, uh, and getting value from that haste puddle. That is definitely a mistake. But overall, the, the run was really f fun. Um, I'm playing with my my friend Olberon here. This is uh, Live Lock. He's uh, he's one of the guys that I've been playing with a lot through all of Shadowlands, and we're just pugging our DPS teammates here. And we found a, a pretty good squad, so definitely feel feel like the run was a pretty good one overall. I think one of the things that I should start doing is being the one to do the prio into the into the encrypted mob so like i'm just like padding right now and killing a tick but like what i'd really love actually is for my dps teammates to be spending their cooldowns on killing the mobs and then the encrypted guy like he kind of dives passively but i think if i kill him a little bit faster than or help kill him a little bit faster then that might be more value for the team so that's something i want to actually try to work on and I'm pretty sure I, on my rogue, I literally just ignore the, the encrypted mobs. Um, I like do no cleave on on sub rogue, and so unless like I really need to do prio on on the encrypted mob, I'm just like ignoring them because my teammates are gonna kill them passively. But on the druid, I actually do like pretty good single target dam. So and damage is damage, right? Like I I should just be prioing the the ur mob and. Helping, uh, helping the team get their cooldowns reset a little bit faster. So this boss is like a little spicy with the blood DK because that headbutt can be a lot of damage. Um, like right there, he took you know maybe eighty percent of his HP in in damage, and I didn't really worry too much in that case because I saw that he had rune tap and. He had quite a lot of runic power as well, so he's going to be able to heal that up, no problem. But it's definitely uh, a little scary. <laughs> um, and so here I actually have a lot going into this first Severing Smash. So basically just going to be... Uh, I think I yeah, roar my team just so they can get back a little bit faster, then get back into the fight a little bit faster. And I actually make a mistake here and use Flourish. We had a little bit of the Ur buff left. And that herb buff 
doesn't just give cooldown reduction, it also helps give you mana back, and it also heals everyone a little bit. And so I think that what I should have done is just like been a little more proactive about ramping rejuves and then just like quickly soaked everything and then let that ur buff really do the bulk of the healing instead of spending a cooldown on it. Because now I don't have my flourish and my plan is to ramp and then trank and then basically let all the melee soak the, uh, the orbs, right? Um, and that works out fine. No serious problems there. Um, but this is one of those bosses where like every everything matters, especially on, on higher keys. This this key is is probably a little too low to, to really matter. Um, but on a higher key, like immuni every immunity matters. Um, you know, minimizing the total number of smashes really matters because you just won't have the healing to cover every single one. Um, so here, yeah, I just instantly soak and start uh, start casting the Convoke, and it feels like kind of easy to to cover it. To be to be honest, um, the Druid healing is so good, and just get a bear form to help soak that. And then just, we already had a, a drain, a hungering drain, and so like there's not a lot of damage coming out now. Um, we've got one more one more smash here, but I have flourish, so I'm thinking, you know, just hit the wild growth. I think I, I make a mistake here. I should have actually um, swift mended first to get soul of the forest, but like it doesn't really matter. The boss is dead, and we're chilling. This pull can be a little scary, especially on uh, on raging week, because you're 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 a little um you're definitely like not too worried about it because it's not fortified. But then these guys start raging, and these raging bolts actually do a lot of damage. So our uh, our tank here does a really good job of uh well, that's unfortunate. I'm dropping the AMZ and um. And that really helps save a lot of a lot of healing that I need to do. Um, unfortunately, the mage got cursed there, and I just spent my dispel on clearing out some of those rack soul debuffs. Um, so our mage got to be AFK for a second, but it's okay. He wasn't in combust anyway, and so he wasn't really going to do damage. But now he's got a bust, and he should be busting. Actually, maybe he's going to save for a... Kind of curious if he ends up saving, but... It's okay, I have cat form convoke, and so I can do some pretty good burst prio here. And it actually feels pretty good. I'm excited to try try convoke with um with draft of deep focus and see if there's like a cool hybrid like prio burst, but also like really strong team healing build. Um I think that could be that could be pretty fun. Here I'm actually a little worried about our DK because I saw that he had really low runic power. But one thing I didn't notice is that he just got into his swarming mists. So he actually turns out has infinite runic power. Um, but I definitely put a lot of healing into him at the start there. Another unfortunate situation where a mage gets the curse. Not the end of the world. Again, he's not in combust. But... Ideally, I think I should be letting, especially on um, on Tyrannical Week, letting those Rack Souls just sit on people and just healing through it, and then prioritizing my Dispel for the Curses. I know when, when I'm on my Rogue, I actually will tend to prioritize stops on the Curses, uh, because one of those going off is really, really devastating, especially if it's on the Healer on a, on a Fortified Week, or if it's on the Mage during their Combust, like they're going to lose all of their damage. And so the more I play the more I play DPS, the more I am like thinking of ways to like help my team do more damage. Um, like I, I'm learning what's painful for DPS players to, to deal with and um, I'm like trying to think of ways that I can help improve their lives as a as a healer, whether it's you know prioritizing 
you know, curse dispels or or stops. I originally thought of healing mostly as like, how can I make my tank's life easier? And I think that's really valuable. Like tanks, um, I mean, it depends on the week and it depends on the dungeon, but tanks can definitely have a rough, rough time. Um, but now I have a newfound appreciation for how difficult DPS is, and so I'm, uh, I'm now trying to think of ways to. Uh, that was a pretty good trank, I think. Um, we definitely have a lot of damage going out, and we're gonna get both me and the mage cursed. Um, so now we get to just, just stand in and be AFK for a minute here. But what did we get? We got nine stacks of the lantern buff. So this overseer is gonna fall over. I can pretty much guarantee it. And I get into Heart of the Wild and end up doing a decent amount of prio there. And I give everyone Stampeding Roar, I think. Yeah, just trying to help them get away a little bit faster. Um, I got the curse, which is a little unfortunate, but again, not the end of the world. Yeah, so we have mostly been getting Ur. I feel like that's been the... Oh, that was close. I think our mage was down to like less than a thousand HP right there. That was really close. Um, we've mostly been prioritizing Ur. That feels like that's been the the move, just because um, almost everyone benefits from cooldown reduction, and the mob is definitely the easiest one to deal with, right? It's like entirely on the tank, and uh, melee DPS, of course, to dodge the swirlies. Um, but the fact that the the mob just follows you around, there's no extra kick. Like kicks are already spread so thin in this game, with like some of the bigger pulls and like needing to kick all of this other stuff. That uh, like adding one more kick to the mix is like not great. Oh, I accidentally body. This is actually unfortunate. I body pull this, and then my tank walks in and it actually lags out, and uh, he just falls over. Like, I'm thinking, like, oh, it's not great, but it's not the end of the world. And now I'm like, oh, we are we are just dead. So I get the B-Res, but he's literally just lagging out. He sounds like a robot in Discord right now. And I am... I am very worried. And I'm in a pod. And uh, he's almost back. I remember, like, he... All right around here is where he starts talking, and now he's back, and I think we're in pretty good shape. Our rogue is actually in rough shape here, so I'm doing some prio on him. Mage helped with the... Oh, no, I decurse that. Oh, we kind of stabilize. Okay, I soothe that scribe. That scribe is doing a lot of team damage. I think I could have helped this out a little bit if I had uh, maybe done another soothe in there. If I had soothed one of the scribes a little bit earlier, then there's a chance that our demon hunter doesn't die to uh, to just random books. But I also didn't catch if he was uh, if he had aggro on on some of the mobs as well. It's uh, entirely possible that he was just our tank for a little bit there. Um, so I'm actually like kind of surprised that we uh, we survived that. But uh, oh, this is. This is kind of embarrassing. I'm watching myself stand here and doing all this cat damage and stand right next to my field of blossoms. Like how like how am I not standing in my field of blossoms right now? That's what is it? Like 15% haste? It's like half a bloodlust. And I can get it every minute. And I'm just like not benefiting from it. I am definitely rusty on Night Fae, because I've mostly been playing Kyrian and Necrolord in most of my keys. So I definitely have to get used to that. And actually before, last season when I was playing Night Fae, I was also playing Corrain most of the time for first strike. So I am definitely super rusty on, on standing still. It's not something I like to do as a druid. I like One of my favorite things about playing druid is that it's so mobile. And I feel like putting down a circle and then needing to stand in it is like a feels bad. It's, it is definitely not ideal. It's not the end of the world either, but 
I think here I'm asking my tank if I wanted, if he wanted me to root that scribe patrol, but we're like, fuck it, we got the, we've got the urn open, we might as well pull them in and get more stacks. That was a weird flourish. I, I don't know why I did that. I actually have no, no good reason for that flourish. I think maybe I wanted to just like prioritize damage for a second, but no one was really in any danger. Um, I think I'm on edge a little bit from the uh, the DC and near wipe, so I'm being a little bit more cautious. I think I actually end up playing pretty cautiously throughout most of the rest of this key, um, and I don't think that's I don't think that's strictly necessary. Oh, here um, we want we know that this is the real chamber sentinel, and my tank asked me to go go proc it and bring it in because he doesn't want to move the. Uh, the scribes of the warden. He wants to keep these guys grouped. This was unfortunate too. We missed a. We missed a barb shackles kick. So I'm just fully ramped on the rogue, trying to to keep him alive. And that's another one where oh I, I had a very late soothe on that death warden. I think probably part of the reason that he took so much damage was because I hadn't soothed him. So that was that was a mistake. I was definitely tunnel visioned on just healing, and I think I could have actually prevented more damage by <laughs> spending a global on soothing. And uh, I feel like this boss is one where I notice a lot of the healing buffs a lot more, and it's because there's like this weird mix of of team healing and very intense single target healing. So, okay, that was a good nether or a blur. I I don't know what what their moves do, but I know that I'm tracking their uh, uh, demon hunters uh, defensives there. Um, yeah, this it's so weird. There's like this strange mix of oh, so this is the overlap. This should be flourish. Okay, good. I flourish there. Rogue uses faint, that's good as well. And this is like, it feels trivial. Like, maybe not trivial, but like, Druid healing feels so good now. It's kind of crazy. Um, and especially when you're playing with, with people that are like doing a, a good job of not taking tons of avoidable damage. Like if you can just predict when damage is going to happen and just prep for it, Druid healing feels insanely good. Like this ad is up. This was unfortunate. That dude stood in the puddle. There's like nothing I could do to save you there, buddy. But um, nice AMZ. And uh, that, that also prevented a lot of damage. I think what also helps a lot is that I have this, uh, you know, my, my buddy's playing Blood DK and uh, I'll spend two globals every 15 seconds just to like keep him kind of hotted up. And it's like not that hard to keep the blood DK alive. It's mostly their job to keep themselves alive. And I'm just there to like help smooth out their HP so that as they're taking damage, they can more easily like react to these big damage spikes and, and heal themselves up. Um, Oh, he used his like blur or whatever again, and I overlapped that with Iron Bark because uh, I remembered he had used it earlier, but I wasn't checking my Omni CD properly, so I didn't realize that he had it again. So it would have been nice to have it here, um, but it's okay. I spend the the Swift Mend, keeping him topped, and like. So I'm like looking at this and really the, the closest call was the mage uh, a little bit ago where the mage ended up having uh oh here's another flourish and yeah, the mage got targeted by the castigate and then like somehow took a lot of damage and I don't really know why um, but it was the only time that I actually felt like someone was in danger of dying other than the rogue standing in the puddle but yeah, Rest of Druid healing this season is just so good, and I'm really excited for the second legendary. Like, 
my plan is to mostly focus on uh, on damage legendaries because I feel like druid healing is already really really good. But I think there might be a case to be made for like doubling down on a healing build and like trying out Verdant Infusion and uh, and Night Fae or or maybe Verdant Infusion and uh, and Necrolord. Like the Necrolord legendary is also really good for damage, just like spreading the adaptive swarm on everything and then spreading moon fires and just doing like huge moon fire damage and then on top of that if you can get get extensions of adaptive swarm and send word with the burden infusion on your tank like holy shit your tank healing is going to be just off the charts good and you're then you're going to have like pretty good uh trash damage as well and then on top of that you'll have pretty good Single target damage for bosses if you're able to, uh, you know, just be prioritizing keeping adaptive swarm up on bosses. There ends up being this like almost mini game of trying to refresh low stack adaptive swarms and then have the swarms be just like jumping back and forth between your team and whatever it is you're fighting. And so it's like totally viable to have near 100% uptime of adaptive swarm on a boss. And that's like, you know, twenty five percent extra damage, right? <laughs> That's just gonna make your your dots tick that much faster. And then on top of that, all of your hots are ticking, you know, more effectively on your team as well. So, I'm I'm really excited for Druid healing this season. I think, I think it's gonna be a really really strong class once double legendaries and and all of that gets introduced. And I feel like the tier sets are also the tier set bonuses are also insanely good i mean it doesn't do anything for your damage and druid healing is already so good but like you're already pressing nature's or um swift mend to get soul of the forest when you want to heal your team and so just getting tree in that case is like insanely good i think i may have only gotten two here I actually, I don't know if I got three, uh, three orbs, but in either case, like this was the boss that I had in mind when I decided to play Night Fae for this, this dungeon. I'm like, okay, you know, we're going to kill the Ur, so I'm definitely going to have Convoke for both damage and healing right away on this boss, right? Like you probably saw I sent the Convoke for damage and then it's already back up. And on top of that, I also flourished. So... I'm getting a lot of benefits from the cooldown reduction of Ur. Like, I've got the Convoke, I've got my Bark Skin back, like, it's actually kind of cracked. For for this dungeon and anywhere where there's going to be a lot of HPS checks. And like here I'm like, well I've got my, I pressed Innervate, which uh, maybe was a little early on Innervate. And my Weak or is telling me to like press more buttons to heal my team, but like the damage is, is over and everyone's like in pretty good shape. I'm gonna do a little bit of prio on the uh on the mage just because he had that dot. It's like that random dot that the uh the boss puts out. I'm gonna come over here and get in my F flow. And then we'll wild growth and then Okay, I, I don't know if I love that convoke actually. Um it definitely was like valuable from a healing perspective, but I had Flourish, and I think what I should have done actually is pressed Flourish and then spent that Convoke on more damage here because I have my Ruby, and now I just press my Ruby without anything else. And I'm not gonna lie, that's like a little scuffed. I think if I use Flourish there and then DPS Convoke, then I would have. I think I took four orbs, <laughs> my poor team. Um, I mean, to be fair, my rogue hasn't pressed cloak and my mage hasn't used their ice block yet. Um, so that's not ideal, but but yeah, I think if I if I use flourish there instead of um, instead of convoke, then I can send the the DPS convoke, and then I have my tranquility. And so here I, I have the same idea, but it's like kind of late. I'm also 
thinking maybe we just kill boss and we don't have to get hit by this, but then uh, I, I'm not a believer, so I collect my orbs. But yeah, I didn't use Trank there, and I think I could have fit in one more DPS Convoke if I had used Trank to cover that gap. I think it was just kind of bad planning on my part. I just kind of looked at what I had and sent the the first thing that I kind of noticed, and uh, that's, that's definitely a mistake. So our plan here, we got enough count upstairs that we can just kill this pack and then shroud past the uh, the three pack of, uh, of lieutenants. So this is like, uh, yeah, pretty easy. I don't even know why I put a hot on my, my tank there. He's full. But we, uh, yeah, you got to like kind of run into the wall there just to uh, be as, as far left as possible. Even with the distract, like I sometimes will see people get uh, get caught by that uh, that mob. So I'm trying to remember what I... I didn't really have a plan going into this aside from like keep everyone alive. And I think um, at this point I'm seeing him pretty low. My thing is beeping. So I'm, I'm just pressing, pressing convoke. And like look at that healing though. Like let me just go back real quick. Like we're all pretty weak. The rogue especially. And now like... We're just chilling. And I really wish my healing meter in the bottom right there was set to the current pole because I'm pretty sure I'm doing insane HPS in that in that very case. And this is looking like maybe a trank act uh trank angle. No, I'm I have a smooth brain, so I didn't trank there. I feel like that uh that would have been a, a pretty high value trank. And the rogue used evasion, I guess that was probably thinking in case the blink step um was targeting him, he could dodge it, but So now I see that the boss is at 90%. And uh, I have Convoke, Heart of the Wild, and Ruby. And I should spend it on Dam here. Because I have Flourish and I have I have Trank. I should be I should be doing damage. Oh our Demon Hunter took that. That was rough. But we are healthy now. We are in good shape. I flourish here, and I think it was early, because we didn't have the blink step. Okay, I really want to see me use uh, use some some damage here. Okay, okay, this is pretty good. All right, that that that's okay. I'm I don't I don't hate that. It was a little late. I think I I could have safely done it earlier. Um, I guess I was waiting to get max stacks of the lantern. That's what I was doing. Definitely, that's what I was doing. But I'm definitely finding myself playing a little more conservatively here than I think I should be. I think, and this actually continues on to the last boss as well. I, I definitely remember holding my Convoke for way too long on the last boss. Like, I think I use it for damage maybe once. And that is definitely a problem. This last boss, though, like, it's one of those bosses that feels like you can go from everyone being fine to, like, everyone being dead in a very short period of time. If the the bleeds cleave, like, what just happened there, we didn't spread for that, and so it hits three people, and on, a, on the boss with the, the bleed and all of the other mechanics and everyone's trying to, like, do as much damage as possible. It's it's definitely very, very stressful. And here I'm like a little worried about our tank. He's got the bleed. 
He's got his dancing rune weapon up, which is nice, but he's got a lot of uh, a lot of runic power. Oh yeah, this is a roar angle right here. We just want to get up in here and get into this room. And you know, I'm, I'm looking at the the overall damage right now, and my damage is definitely a little bit low. I think after that uh, that first near wipe in the ring, I start playing a lot more conservatively, and you know, it's not costing us the key. Like by no means are we. You know, close to depleting this key, but like we probably could have two chested it if I do just a little more damage, because like our DPS players are doing a lot of damage. They're they're in pretty good shape here. I'm I'm pretty happy with how well they do. The tank is doing you know reasonable blood DK damage. This is like not 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 bad damage by any means, and my damage is okay, but I can definitely do more here. And so here's another case where this Ur, like, has what, like 200,000 HP, 250,000 HP? I can definitely be the one doing the prio on the Ur. And uh, I think in Pugs, it's not really going to matter because, like, I, I have no way of, like, communicating to these these people that I, I can help with the, the Ur. And honestly, I don't think I can do 200,000 damage to the Ur. Um, you know, in, in a short period of time, like the same way that our DPS players can. But, oh, I think I ate. Yeah, I got hit by the bleed and the piercing blur. I don't know what happened there. I guess my brain lagged and I decided to just stand in that piercing blur. That's like another case where like key too low, right? Like if I'm not if I'm not dying to that piercing blur, then uh, that's uh, I remember being a little worried about my rogue there, but he uh, he put up his feint, which is nice. It's going to reduce the AOE damage that he takes. I think the other thing that I noticed on this this fight was that oh, I have heart of the wild up. Do I heart of the wild convoke here? I, oh, part of the wild. But then everyone's taking the bleeds, and I'm I'm here thinking I might need this convoke if like everyone cleaves the bleeds or like some bad thing like that happens, then I might need this convoke. But at the same time, I have uh, I have Trank. And I'm gonna have Flourish pretty soon, too. And here I am doing... Like, 2k DPS. I'm cleaving the bleed on myself. I'm part of the problem. At least I'm doing an okay job of, like, keeping my... Hots or my dots rather on the boss. I'm not like letting them fall off for too long. But this is like feeling kind of spicy. I have the flourish again. That's my second flourish this fight. And I want to be in here in cat form. I get one rake up. I managed to dodge that bleed, which is kind of sick. Do I convoke now? The boss is almost dead. I think I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know, I might, I still might need this convoke. And I think I was about to cast it there, actually, because uh, we're, we're pretty low and I know the boss fight is almost over and the only thing that makes us not, <laughs> okay, okay, all right, Will. The only thing that makes us not time this key is if we like full wipe, right? And the only way that's going to happen is if we like don't drop the shield or you know something along those lines. But anyway, this I thought this was like a pretty fun run, and it it definitely shows how like how useful all of the different builds are for Resto Druid. I think like t 
tailoring what you play to the dungeon at hand is i think one of the the more interesting things about the game and for like a really long time it felt like resto druid had like one or maybe two builds that were that were really good and now it feels like there's a lot of different builds that are are good and can either just be like really good if you want to play them all the time like i don't think there's anything wrong with that or they could be good situationally like in this case the uh you know i want to keep playing feral affinity because i think it's just you know more fun um but i also knew that i needed uh you know some extra healing here both because i'm a little rusty and because there's a lot of tough bosses in this dungeon but it's cool that uh that there's so much variety that we can choose from and uh, that makes me really excited to play the class in uh in this patch but yeah let me know in the comments if you have any questions or thoughts about how i can improve in uh you know based on what you're seeing here and uh you know thanks for watching good luck out there